middle of the USC Davis Winery where you see lots of different students come through over the last 10 years and also you're very up to date with the trends and winemaking and what's happening. What would you say is one of the biggest emerging trends at the moment in winemaking? One of the biggest trends is the whole cluster fermentations with uh, Pinot Noir varieties specifically. And it's not just happening here, it's happening in, in California, it's happening in Oregon, it's happening in France. We're doing a project right now where we're actually profiling 18 Pinot Noir vineyards ranging from Southern California and the Santa Barbara area to the Willamette Valley. It's, uh, the 15 to the 18 uh, vineyards are all on the same rootstock and the same clone. So the real differences in, this, in the study that we would see is the site difference. And it's a multidiscipline project. It's working with uh, uh, soil scientists, people who are looking at the general biome of the vineyard, the microbiologists, the viticulturists and the winemakers. And so, so really to, to look at what makes this grape so magical in this region of the world. Excellent. And you mentioned Pinot Noir. Is that, do you think that's the most important growing grape here at the moment? Or is Cabernet still in charge and Chardonnay? Uh, Pinot Noir is sort of making an edge, but I really think that Cabernet and Chardonnay are still in charge. Uh, there's, a, there's a trend to make Cabernets more, more approachable uh, as a younger wine. Um, and, uh, and of course, Chardonnay is just, there's, there's more of a move back towards the, the Burgundian style, the higher acid variety Chardonnays without the malolactic fermentation with minimal oak aging. Excellent. And another trend that you identified with me earlier and which is particularly poignant in this winery is sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, what are your impressions of sustainability and how would you encourage other wineries to, to be able to become self-sustainable? I think that the, that the most important part of sustainability is look at your metrics. We like to think that in the, in the, in the world of sustainability that it's going to differ by region. And of course water and energy are the biggest impacts that the wine industry has on our planet. Um, but water may not be as much of a problem in France, uh, especially this year with all the floods, uh, and energy and where we actually get the energy is going to be more of an issue. Is it, is it the energy from fossil fuels? Is it energy from nuclear power? Is it energy from the sun? Do we have enough energy to get from the sun? On the side of water is looking at the metrics that how can we how can we reduce the footprint of water? And, and the, it's, it's, it's a given that water needs to be part of the winemaking process. But how can we reduce that water? Because the water is used to clean. There's chemicals that are used to clean, looking at better chemistries so that what we're putting back out into the environment is a lot, is a lot softer and we leave the planet a better, uh, in a better way someday. Excellent. I have a question with regards to the, the change and the leap from being a home winemaker because you're, you were an avid home winemaker as well and obviously now you're a commercial winemaker and managing the training facility here. Uh, if someone's looking to make that jump from home winemaking to commercial winemaking, how big do they need to jump? <laughs> You know, I think that the, that the jump really is, is one, and it's, Robert Mondavi told me personally one time, he says, in anything in life, you've got to love it, you've got to follow your passion. And of course, he was a very inspirational man. And so, if you're following passion, the jump is, the jump is, is very small. And of course, you know, there's a, there's a joke, all it takes is money. Well, it does, but, it also, but I think that the biggest part of of taking this leap is just following your passion and understanding that tomorrow it might be a little bit different than today because the vineyard comes ready and is exactly the day that we filmed this. This is the decision that I had to make about 18 hours ago was to go out and harvest the vineyard. Uh, and, and so, so really, but it's a labor of love. We got up at 4.30 in the morning, we were in the vineyard, we've harvested it, the grapes are on the way to the winery. It's just, it's not work if you enjoy doing it. Excellent. And obviously you see a lot of students come through your doors each year. What are the number one rookie errors that you see happen in the winery? What are the mistakes that everyone makes when they just start? 
Well, uh, let's qualify that if they make a mistake, that becomes that's a that's a learning tool for them, and then this is the the exact facility for them to to make that mistake and to and to understand from it. Uh, I, I see students that have a lot of experience. I see students that have no experience, and so looking at. Uh, understanding pump flows, pump diagrams, closing tanks properly. Uh, those are all very common things and I like to joke that it never happens in industry but it does and we need to learn something every day that we're on, uh, on the winery floor. Excellent and what is your advice for students who are just beginning their winemaking career who are just starting to study the subject? Uh, I would say travel, travel the world travel the world and learn 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 from people don't go to any places and think that you're going to be the winemaker on your first day out of class go and absorb the experience of the winemakers that have, that are there mentoring you in, in in a few years you're going to be able to identify what you like and go seek out those jobs uh, or maybe even start your own uh, your own brand